Hey guys, how are you? My name is Frida and welcome to this channel. I'm going to be sharing a story today that I've been kind of hesitant on sharing, but I decided it's just time. Maybe someone can learn from it or yeah, whatever. And that is why we would decide to uproot our family and move away from everything that we had come to learn and to know after being there most of our lives and spending most of our lives in Canada and starting our own life. We had started a trucking company, we started our family and yeah, but sometimes you just got to make the choices you that are best for your family. So it really was not just a one day we woke up and we decided we we're just going to be adventurous and try something different because this for us was not just one of those things. We were actually quite disappointed that uh, our life in Canada, the way we had thought it should be able to go, just wasn't, or that it just started looking more and more glim. And it all started, I'm gonna back up to when we did so become self-employed because we did have a five-year plan that later got just completely thrown out the window. We became self-employed in 2014, bought our own truck and subcontracted from a company that specialized in doing just that in the grain industry. And we were a great match with the company. Things were going great for two years. And then prices, the global oil prices, they dropped and a bunch of people got laid off in Western Canada and it just, wasn't going good for them. That automatically caused our industry to, or the industry we were in, to become saturated. And there was way more people doing the job than what could possibly really be worth having in it, which lowers the prices that you gotta do the work for. And everybody's just kind of trying to keep up at that point. And sometimes it was better worth it not doing too much work because it meant that you had to do it cheap and it just became not worth being in the industry or not if you were wanting to get out of it like we were. We had planned on five years in, we tried to have my husband home, maybe he would do dispatching himself and he'd be able to be more part of our day to day. We were having, we had started having kids and we wanted the family life where we get to see my husband and their dad every day and get to spend time together. And that just didn't look possible anymore. And then there was a whole bunch of infrastructure regulations being thrown into just all different parts of the economy that were affecting us. And it became harder and harder as time went on. And in 2017, we had started talking about leaving the country and looking at different places we could maybe go, but nothing really seemed very appealing, I guess. And it also did start looking like maybe the Canadian people were gonna wake up a little bit more and decide that enough was just enough because there were so many people, particularly in Western Canada that were affected by these regulations and all sorts of things that the government was implementing but our hopes were very quickly shattered when governments did not change in 2019 and the 2019 election results really showed us I guess the people that elect and as long as it's done fairly it really shows you what the culture is that makes these votes a certain way and brings the government in. So it really showed us what the culture was like and how the people were thinking somewhat. And we realized that unless the people changed, other things were not gonna change. It had to be the people first. It wasn't gonna be the government. And to us, that is kind of scary when, as parents, you see that you're supposed to raise your children in this and 
a whole lot of things started slowly being brought into schools, or I guess now looking back, it was pretty rapid how much has changed since back when I got out of the school system in Canada and how different it already is from when I was there. And to us as parents, we're supposed to send our kids there. We're supposed to entrust our children to these systems. And that looked really glim for us as well. And then 2020 came about and there was a whole bunch of stuff there that we were not liking too much. We did pull our kids out of school in, what was it? January, 2021, we started homeschooling. We were moving anyway, and that was just the simpler way to go then, homeschool, and we could have more freedom over what our children were learning and what they were influenced by. And they loved it. We did notice a change really fast. And then we had just started homeschooling and really talking more about different options of where we could move to. And we figured if nothing else, um, in a couple years from now, things just keep going that way, then maybe we would move back to where we originally both came from. And that had never been an option until then. And then it was, we had talked about it for maybe a month, decided that maybe that would be an option one day. And then we had a friend of ours who has always been quite interested in South America. He came to us one day and he asked us if that would be in, if we would be in for that. He had himself been looking at where, where he would want to maybe go to and he certainly wasn't happy with the way things were going in Canada either. And so we felt that that was kind of a nudge. You know, we very much believe in following your calling and we felt that we could not ignore that. We knew that it was gonna be a huge shock to so many people around us because they, I guess they had built a certain image of us and we had kept these things to ourselves, you know, that we were looking at where could we possibly go and talking about one day we would move. And so that was the decision that we made. We decided to move back to Paraguay and it has really been one of the, uh, hands down the best decision that we could have made for our family. We haven't been here terribly long. It's been just over seven months now, but our kids love it here. They do miss, obviously they miss Canada, particularly youngest who was really close to two of her cousins and she's constantly asking for them, but that is to be expected. And it's not always easy. It certainly isn't. There's hardships, but those um, are experiences and our hardships, what's been difficult, what's been easy, or I guess relatively easy considering the move that it is. Those I will be sharing more with you in a later video. And so that is just, kind of the progression that happened on why we moved here and decided to leave everything behind. It sometimes got to think back and look at all the things that we did leave behind and you kind of surprise yourself at being able to do that, but we're doing that and we're getting situated and yeah, I really look forward to sharing more with you on different experiences we've had here and how it's been going. So if you're interested in that, tune back in the next couple of weeks. We'll try to upload a video every week. And if you have any specific things that you would like to know about, then feel free to ask. We've had some experience with the health healthcare system and education here. Kids are in school and loving it. And we really love the school that they are in. And government, we've had some experience with, obviously then there's paperwork for our kids that we gotta do. And yeah, if, you, if there's anything specific that you'd like to know as well, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to address those.